Hi and welcome to Driver's Seat. Today we're taking a look at Subaru's midlife facelifted BRZ Coupe. Now it's had a new front bumper which is wider, more aerodynamic and more aggressive. LED headlights while under the bonnet there's a retuned engine and suspension. At the back it gets redesigned taillights which are now LEDs and this very stylish pedestal spoiler. There's also new 10 spoke alloys. But let's get this thing on the road and see what it's like to drive. So the facelifted BRZ is available in just one trim level, that's SE Lux. And there's only one engine to choose from as well. It's a two litre four cylinder boxer engine, which is petrol, and develops 197 brake horsepower. That's enough power and torque to get this from stationary to 62 miles an hour in 7.6 seconds. And it will push on to 140 miles per hour before running out of puff. It will return 36.2 miles to the gallon, but disappointingly emits 180 grams per kilometer of CO2, which is rather high. Over 130 odd miles tootling around the Cotswolds, we've managed nearly 37 miles to the gallon, and that's really pretty impressive. So this is fitted with a six speed manual gearbox. There's also an automatic six speed available as well. Pretty packed full of stuff though. It gets 17 inch alloy wheels, heated front sport seats, keyless entry and go. While there's dual zone climate control, a 6.2 inch color touchscreen infotainment and cruise control. It's also got Starlink, but it does miss out on sat nav. This is made alongside the Toyota GT86, and that really is the biggest rival for this car, but this significantly undercuts it for price and standard kit. You're then looking at maybe a Nissan 370Z or a BMW 2 Series for other rivals. Now the 2 Series is more refined and a little bit less fun, but is a serious contender. Whilst the latest Mazda MX-5 RC with its folding hardtop roof and rear wheel drive setup again offers this a good challenge. The engine really loves to be revved, it's got a really consistent power delivery from very low down the rev range, but once you get to about 5,000 revs you feel it push on again. Mid-range torque is excellent, so 4th, 5th and even 6th gear it'll pick up speed very very quickly, which means you often don't have to downshift to overtake slower cars ahead. The gearbox is a nice short throw and a reasonably stubby gear lever so you can just happily flick through the gears no problem at all. They feel quite chunky and mechanical so it has a feel of quality. The steering's pretty light and accurate. It's well weighted throughout and consistent and you pick the line you want and it will go exactly where you want it to. The BRZ has got a really taut body control. There's a very slight hint of lean as you go into the sharper of corners, but otherwise you'll never notice it. Thereafter, it stays really flat and true, and it's an absolute joy to throw around. It feels light and lithe, it feels absolutely planted. When it doesn't feel so planted, it is coming off a slippy corner or roundabout, put on too much acceleration too early, and the back end will start to dance. However, it's instantly controllable, a little bit of opposite lock, and everything's back to normal. Traction control off, this thing's so controllable. Oh, yeah. The BRZ has a really compliant ride, it's actually very comfortable for a sports car you can crash through some of the bigger potholes and it really doesn't shudder through the cabin. It's very, very, very impressive. Even as a passenger, you feel incredibly comfortable. There's a little bit of wind noise at motorway speeds, but there's quite a lot of tire noise and the cabin isn't the most refined and quiet when you're on the motorway. The driver's seat has a pump lever to adjust height. Uh, I'm in the lowest setting. Now I've got reasonable headroom if I was much taller might struggle but in the lowest setting it's okay there's then a lever to adjust backrest which adjusts quite well and I've been able to find a comfortable driving position the steering wheel adjusts for reach uh, pretty well and tilt but tilt is more limited but I've been able to get comfortable and am pretty happy where I'm sitting 
I'm a little bit higher than I might expect in a sports car, but what that does give me is a nice view out down the bonnet, and I can see that lovely curve which is going over the front wheel arches. These seats are firm but figure hugging and really hold you in place very nicely. The steering wheel's been redesigned as have the instrument dials. The steering wheel's nice to hold, it's leather wrapped and well sized. The dials are pretty clear. The central dial is a rev counter with speed digitally shown while there's a speedometer to the left, although that's a little bit smaller and you do squint a little to see what the speed is. On the right hand side, there's a little computer which can give you your torque curve. Visibility to the side is pretty good thanks to these long doors which give you a nice glass house to look out. However, the roof pillar at the back, because of the sloping coupe line and it's quite thick, is quite an obstacle and there's no reversing camera as well to help you out, although there is front and rear parking sensors. There's not too much space up front to store your bits and bobs. There's a small door bin with a bottle of water, while this central area has an adjustable pull-out compartment for two cup holders and that can be set further forward and back while there's more room for a phone but it's not covered which is a little bit disappointing so you don't get any central armrest and you have to remember to pack all your stuff away when leaving the car so it's not visible to thieves in front of the gear lever there's usb ports and there's a very odd tiny little tray now that tray is not big enough to take a mobile phone so you end up running your cable down through the cabin the infotainment system's pretty basic really it's not hugely intuitive and takes a while to find what you want to do underneath that there's a strip that's come out of a car that feels about 30 years old with the old hour and minute button to change the time. Below that there are three dials to control your ventilation which are quite nicely finished uh, with chrome and some nice teeth while the display is digital behind. In the back to fit anyone larger than your three-year-old daughter's teddy bear is going to be a struggle. There's no leg or knee room behind me and you're really looking at the smallest of children who are going to get comfortable and not have their feet resting on the back of your chair or kicking it. The boot is pretty well sized, it's wide and long with a good flat floor. There's also some good storage underneath and two side compartments. Where it does fail is the depth, it's really quite narrow so you're going to struggle to get bigger suitcases and fatter objects in there. Well, the BRZ is an absolute triumph. It's great to drive, it's got a comfortable ride, it's just loads of fun, and that engine is 100% usable with a great soundtrack. The car's well priced and it looks fantastic. Thanks for watching Driver's Seat. If you've enjoyed today's video, remember to subscribe to our channel for free and let us know what you think about the latest BRZ.